I'm now on the National Traction Engine Trust stand with Dan Brothwell. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. And welcome to the Classic Restoration Show. Thank you very much. Could you tell me a little bit about the National Trust, National Traction Engine Trust, please? Uh, well, the National Traction Engine Trust started up in the 1950s as a group of engine men who wanted to try and preserve these engines because they were... I was going through a spate where they were coming out of the working lives and most of them were becoming, well, being turned into scrap. Um, however, a couple of gentlemen decided to go meet up in a field in Appleford and yeah. race with them. Really? Um, and it's generally how our hobby of traction engine rallying sort of grew and developed and became sort of 60 years on to where we are today with sort of a thriving community. So how many members do you have? Uh, we've got about 2,000 members of the Trust, um, and there's about 400 Steam Apprentice Club members as well. So. so do you have do's and shows and stuff like that? We don't actually hold our own events or rallies anymore, um, but we do have representation at other shows. Um, we have our own authori rally authorisation scheme, which there's quite a few events up and down the country involved with. We've got affiliated clubs, um, and we get involved with them and try and help each other out in whatever we can to promote what we do and promote the hobby. And what about the traction engines on the stand? Can you give me a brief history about them? Um, what we've got here, we've got um, the Norman E-Box Fowler Road Locomotive Talisman. Um, this was built in 1926 um, and it was one of the really the best of its class uh, to be built. Uh, Alex Sharphouse of Old Hall Farm is originally decided to carry out sort of the recreation of the, the engine but uh, in, in the last sort of 12 to 18 months he's actually managed to acquire original components so it's gone from the recreation to the rebuilding oh, right. So uh, and also at the moment we're in the process of uh, riveting up the hind wheels uh, using the hydraulic rivet riveting tackle, eventually they, they will have the spokes riveted oh, in right. and the hubs cast in and uh, they'll become machined up and vulcanised rubber put on them and they'll become the back wheels of the traction engine. It's, uh, go it's good to see somebody working on the equipment, you know, on the, on the articles and the traction engines while you're on the stand. What about this little one here? Yeah, this is a uh, very early one. It's a uh, Barrows and Stewart portable um, and it's owned by Jim Blen Blenkinsop, whose family have got a long history with the Trust and an involvement in steam. So, uh, I mean, I don't really know an awful lot about that one, but... Uh, yeah, we've got a display board around the corner that tells us a bit more. So, have you have you done this show before? First time we came here was last year. And what was the response to it? We got a very good response. Uh, a lot of the sort of public that came round looking at us and the car clubs were coming up saying, "Oh, wow! It's great to see all the traction engines and everything. It's it's really nice. It's something different. You know, it's it stands out against the side of the classic cars. And we, you know, we just thought." as a club that we'd come out and we'd, we'd try something different, get into a different bit of an audience and just showcase what we can do. And this year, you know, doing the hot riveting, it's, it's just showing, you know, the old it's skills. Showing a lot of interest. People are all grouped round. So what about what, what shows would you normally do if you did it, a regular one? Regular ones, normally we just do, like, the traction engine rallies and country fairs and that sort of thing. We don't really... Uh, it's only just recently that we started trying to get into this crossover of actually getting the name out there and appealing to a diff slightly different audience and just try and make, make sure you know, people know that we're out there. We do go out on the road and we are here and it's all right to get your hands mucky once in a while. Yeah, that's right. So what's this here, this a race for a firkin of ale? This is, this is the story of really how it all, all began. Um, it was uh, Miles Chetwin Stapleton and... Um, Arthur Napper in Appleford, they both bought traction engines and they thought it would be a great idea just to see who'd actually got the fastest steam engine. So, so this was the start, this was this race you were talking this about? This was how it all started. Um, and, what, and this was, um, it was all basically done over a bet for a firkin of ale. So there's actually, there is actually a book that tells you the whole story, which is The Wager for Ale, where they, they go into this field and they just put each other against each, one another to try and uh, move forward. Um, and that became the wager for ale, and Arthur Napper was the the winner. And it's gone from strength to strength ever since. Yeah, they, they held a couple more of the Appleford races, and they just grew and grew in popularity. And one or two other uh, people within the community decided, you know, that had been down and seen the popularity of the races, just thought, well, we could do something like that. But they didn't quite 
how we, they sort of got a little bit more sensible with it all and rather than putting two engines in a field and racing them we, we sort of started taking a bit more pride and a bit more care of everything and actually showing off the capabilities and skills as to what they actually can do and plenty of ale uh, dr drank over the years <laughs> steam engines and ale do tend to go together well thanks very much dan for the uh, the interview and uh, th information on the on the trust thank you no problem thank you